The year is 1998, and hip-hop is in a state of flux. Steeped in the midst of the flashiness of the Jigga era, New Limits commercial golden years, and reeling from the premature departures of Biggie and Tupac, the genre aches for a breakout artist to place their faith in. Surpassing the City of Angels soundtrack and the R. Kelly protege Sparkle to reach the top of the Billboard 200 on June 6th, that emerging star would arrive on It's Dark and Hell is Hot. Depicted in a devilish red glow, a wiry MC from Yonkers, New York, would arrive fully formed on his debut project. From the opening strains of Rough Riders' anthem, hip-hop would never be the same as the combative lyricist known as DMX leapt to the vanguard of the industry. Quick to capitalize on the success of his classic opening statement with Flesh on My Flesh, Blood on My Blood that December, X was set on a collision course with the record books that resulted in the unsigned hype alumni becoming the first living hip-hop artist to net two number one albums within a 12-month period. At this stage, the acclaim that X received even took some members of his inner circle aback. At the time, we knew that he was gonna blow up and bubble like that, the lock Sheik Luch recalled. He was always this guy, this OG, that was sick. Everybody couldn't wait for him to come around and grab the mic. We knew he had that special talent. At the same time, I didn't grasp it all the way. From there, Simmons kept hip-hop's attention span on a short leash, eventually becoming the only rapper to have his first five studio albums debut at number one on the Billboard 200. Granted, this seems like less of a Herculean feat now that hip-hop rules the pop sphere, but X never made music for mass consumption. Gritty and abrasive in nature, the runaway success of his menacing tracks about robberies and repentance was never achieved by assimilating with the sound of the radio. Immune to dilution or label-mandated pressure to compromise, X's music thrived on the sense of danger and unpredictability that radiated from each and every bar. By the time that he released Grand Champ in 2003 and netted that fifth chart-topping debut, DMX seemed ingrained into the fabric of the genre and was on the fast track towards contention for greatest of all time. In a cruel twist of fate, this record marked the beginning of the end for Simmons' run at the pinnacle of the game. On the 14th of October 2019, the 46-year-old rapper announced that he'd be entering rehab and as a result, canceling a string of live shows. No stranger to either self-imposing or court decree captivity, a spokesperson for the rapper took to his Instagram and declared this. In his ongoing commitment of putting family and sobriety first, DMX has checked himself into a rehab facility. He apologizes for his canceled shows and thanks his fans for their continued support. For longtime fans of Darkman X, this tale has sadly been perpetuated for much of the past 15 years. Each time it seems that he's on the path to redemption, another brushing with the law, and his well-documented battle with addiction will derail his path back to greatness. Renowned for his ability to accurately portray the warring powers of criminality, temptation, and spirituality in his music, the same inner duality that made his output so riveting will prove to be a double-edged sword for his ability to retain success. A home truth that paints iconic material such as Damien, One More Road to Cross, and The Rain into a startling new light, the correlation between his personal struggles and the subject material of his output was so apparent that the forlorn masterpiece of Slippin' was played aloud to the courtroom during his 2018 tax evasion trial. His life experiences were horrible. I've heard terrible tales, but I've never heard such horrible upbringing as this, declared his attorney, Murray Richmond. We thought the video would really demonstrate to the court just what he had to go through to get to where he was. In the midst of his latest setback, it raises the question of whether DMX still has the wherewithal to clamper back to the perch that he was once on among the genre's elite. Once sat at the head of the table, hip-hop fans born post-2000 will be forgiven to think that the notion of DMX as a GOAT contender is nothing short of a fable. But rest assured, it was an argument that once carried weight. In an event that's been blowing up to mythical proportions, DMX once held his own against none other than Jay-Z. Said to have lasted for about four to five hours and waged on a basis of mutual respect, this legendary square off may have predated their rises to fame, but at one stage, the two were neck and neck in the industry standings. 
Although DMX claims that he bested Jay on the grounds that he never lost a battle, their shared admiration would eventually lead to the 1999 Hard Knock Life Tour. Captured in Chris Flores' documentary Backstage, one key scene from the film epitomizes when X used to reside in the game. Hours before the show, Hov and X stand backstage, freestyling over a beat. Good spirited but with an underlying degree of competitiveness, DMX looks at ease as he kicks those frank and sinister rhymes that were his calling card. As they meet in the middle for a dap and a laugh, the two appear as peers, collaborators and equals. And yet, it's a complete overhaul from their statures in the modern era. While X has made haphazard attempts at declaring bankruptcy and served time behind bars for charges ranging from animal cruelty to impersonating a federal officer in cocaine possession, Jay became the inaugural member in Hip Hop's Billionaires Club and stands tall as one of the most respected figures in the industry. Since his 2006 LP Year of the Dog, again, plateaued at number 2 on the charts, DMX's life has been in an eternal tailspin, taken from the heights of critically lauded albums and blockbuster movies to 2012's Undisputed album, its unauthorized follow-up in 2015, and a series of ill-advised appearances on reality TV, the days in which DMX was a superpower in hip-hop rather than a solemn cautionary tale seem to be over. But since he re-entered society after a one-year bid in January of 2019, it's felt like he's right on the cusp of getting back to his former glory and that all hope is not lost. In the public appearances that have followed his freedom, Simmons has seemed more lucid and surer of himself than he was since his storied heyday. For example, look no further than his January interview on Big Boy's Neighborhood. Recorded just days after exiting custody, X spoke of the altered narrative in hip hop from drug pushers to users and made it clear that it was something the recovering addict could not condone. Whoever has the ability to, first, the insight to see it and the talent and ability to do the right thing, it's all of our responsibility, X remarked. They're all promoting drug use. If that's what you want to do, that's your business. But you ain't got to promote it like it's cool and make it cool. Never one to let alienation from what's commonplace in the mainstream throw him off, DMX was always a dissenting voice at his peak and could show the other side of these tales as excess that younger MCs constantly spout. After all, stark tales of life seedier underbelly and his attempts to marry them with his religious beliefs were always his key selling point. And even though he's fresh out of rehab, all signs suggest that this was an informed preventative measure rather than a sign of another slip up. As reported by TMZ, it was said that one of X's kids is very sick, in and out of the hospital, and the stress of that coupled with the pressure of performing again made him feel tempted to use. We're told X knew he needed help trying to balance his home and work life without the use of drugs, so he preemptively checked himself in, hoping to learn how to deal with the issues moving forward. On the subject of work, it appears that Simmons has realigned himself with the very label that propelled him to stardom. In a September 2019 profile with GQ, the newly clear-headed DMX admitted that it was good to be home. Fresh from guesting alongside newer artists such as IDK and 24 Hours, his Rough Riders protege Swiss Beats spoke to Angie Martinez and painted a vivid and heartening picture of X's health, not to mention the status of a new project. I used to say hold him down, but lift him up, right? And the difference between now and then is that he wants to lift himself up also. That's why we're getting this different type of X, with the consistency and he's active. When it's right, it's right. But it's only right when he wanted it to be right. This has been the most consistent I've seen. After informing GQ that he's on a mission to be better than everything that I hear, it seems that Earl Simmons is better positioned to reclaim his spot among hip hop's greats than he's ever been in in over a decade. Where athletes whose careers are riddled by drugs or jail terms have a limited window to make up for lost time, DMX has never lost his ability as a lyricist or that gravelly delivery that made him into a bonafide megastar. Now, a year and a half since they were published, Styles P words in an oral history of its dark and hell is hot seem to have prophesied the stage X is at today. It's hard for me how everybody feels pity for him because I know he's gonna get it together. That's part of his trials and tribulations and what makes him the man he is today. Whether or not he can recapture those past glories, hip hop is rooting for Earl Simmons and patiently waiting for his next move.
This has been a Hip Hop Madness original. Make sure to stay tuned and stay up to date with everything we got going on by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. Oh, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hip Hop Madness and join the movement.